So I, I want to talk about this Wakanda Forever thing that's kind of been going around and kind of been blowing up for a lot of different reasons. And I just kind of want to have a discussion on that. I'm not really going to go in with the comedy all that much or the clips or anything like that. This is just going to be like a, a conversation or like if I would be seeing you one on one or we were on the water cooler at work or, we're, you know, just chilling on break. We're just having a conversation. So there's been a lot of controversy about this movie. And I didn't realize there was so much controversy surrounding this movie until this week. I literally thought pretty much everybody was excited for this movie. Like this was a movie that me personally, I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. You know, like I'm really was excited for this movie and see what they were going to do. And I felt like a lot of people were the same way. I felt like a lot of people were excited for this movie. And then just out of nowhere, it seems like there was this divide. Like Moses just split the Red Sea and like you have half of the people that support the movie on one side and then the other half not supporting the movie. And I think the part where I'm kind of confused because it doesn't even really feel like a divide. It feels like there's a three-way divide. And what I mean by that is there's people that support the movie and like the movie. Then there's people that don't support the movie. Then there's people that don't support the movie and don't like the movie. So so it's like the people that don't support it is divided amongst themselves. So like there's people that literally do not like the movie and they don't, they don't support the movie. Then there's another group of people that do not like the movie and, and, and don't support it and all this stuff. So it, it, it's a real, it's a real divide. It's a real divide here. But I think we need as, as an, in, as a community, as a film going community, I think we need to allow other people to express their thoughts, you know, and, and this is just me thinking outside my, you know, like, like, and I'm fully aware I'm going to have a group of people going, Rob, you're such a hypocrite. You go on here and you bash people all the time. That's true. But you also have to realize when I'm playing and, and, and really kind of like amping stuff up for the joke stuff, you know, like, like the person you see on screen going twinkle toe, cock sucking motherfucker, sweet and sour chicken ass. Like, like that's not me outside of YouTube. Like that's me trying to play up the, the comedy, trying to take it to the next level to try to really be entertaining. Uh, maybe some of, some of you guys don't find that entertaining. That it is what it is. I I feel like it's entertaining. But when we're having real conversations, I I feel like Wakanda Forever somehow turned into politics and religion. Th those are two things. Like politics and religion are two things that I try to never discuss on my channel, because no matter what you say in politics and religion, there are people that take strong stances on one side or another, and they refuse to see the other side or even acknowledge the other side might have some points. So that and that's where Wakanda forever. There, there, there's a team there that says we should have recast T'Challa. And then there's a team that said it's fine. We, we don't need to recast T'Challa. And then there's another team saying you're capitalizing on to uh, Chadwick Boseman's death. And then there's another team. Like It's it really like politics and religion at this point. And I look at it from an outsider looking in. And let's say hypothetically we live in another universe where the movie came out and they did recast T'Challa. Then we would have outrage that I can't believe that's so disrespectful that you would recast Chadwick Boseman. That is so disrespectful. You are disrespecting the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. That, every time these situations happen, I like to play like a little game in my head where I'm sitting at this crossroad and I can either go left or right. And if I go one way, I like to think, what would the alternate reality be in that world? So in this case, we're sitting at Wakanda forever. They, re they, they, they chose not to recast Chadwick Boseman's character. We, we did not recast T'Challa in our universe. But let's think about a universe where we did. Right now, we have outrage. People going, they should have recast. I can't believe it, right? Oh, my God. They should have recast. It's so disrespectful. I guarantee you, dollars to donuts. A million dollars here, guys. In another timeline, if they would have recast, it would have been the same amount of outrage. It's one of those things where the old saying is, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Regardless of what you do, you're going to piss somebody off. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is, guys. So this movie being so... Um, so controversial and feeling like a religious and politic conversation. I, I, I went on a couple people's 
channels and watch their streams. And some of the stuff that they say, I, in my opinion, is asinine. I'm like, how could you possibly feel this way? Like, like you, you, like this movie's exploiting black people. What? Like, like, so, so you're saying that this movie's exploiting black people for money, but you didn't feel that way about the first movie? Like, what? Like the first movie? Like, what? I don't get it. And then you have a group of people going, oh, it's the MCU, it's all females. I'm like, the first movie was the same thing. The only difference is you had the main character who was Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa. I mean, take him out. I mean, they had to play. Okay, I'm about to, I'm about to talk real here, and I don't know how many people are going to follow me. What happens if you're playing chess and one of your best pieces get taken off the board? You work with what you got. OK, you don't recast your queen. You don't recast your bishop or your rook. If your rook, bishop or queen gets taken off the board, it is no longer in play. You now have to work with the pieces you have. You have to work with your pawns. You have to work with your other pieces. That's what you have to do. Chadwick Boseman was taken off the board. They had the ability to recast. They, as a studio and Ryan Coogler, as someone who is a friend, and that's the thing, Ryan Coogler is a friend to Chadwick, right? We're all talking about what Ryan Coogler should have done, and we don't know a goddamn thing about Chadwick. We never met the motherfucker. We never met the man in our life. This dude was a friend of Chadwick Boseman, and we're trying to tell him what he should do for his friend and what is disrespectful and not disrespectful. That, that's the thing. Ryan Coogler... As both a filmmaker, friend, and artist did what he thought was best for his film and best for the respect of Chadwick Boseman and Chadwick Boseman's family. And spoiler alert, they did recast T'Challa at the end of the movie. They literally had a, a son that he had for six years that he sent away so he would be safe and not have to deal with everything. And his son's name is T'Challa. Why do you think his name is T'Challa, guys? Qu question. Any of you guys watch Smallville? Remember Jimmy Olsen? Remember when Jimmy Olsen died in, like, season five? And then, like, oh, no, that wasn't Jimmy Olsen. That was James Olsen. And then the season, the series finale, here comes the same actor coming out. And what's his name? Jimmy Olsen. It's the same thing, guys. It's the same thing. They killed James, and people are like, well, it's James, not Jimmy. What do you think fucking Jimmy is short for? James. So that was Jimmy Olsen. They killed him off, and then they said, oh, no, that was James Olsen. Here comes Jimmy Olsen, played by the same actor. It's the same thing with T'Challa. Yes, T'Challa is dead, but they recasted him by casting a young actor to fill the role of his son named T'Challa. That way, come Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars, when the timeline does some timeline shit, everything is reset. Like, then, does nobody read comic books? Like, like, do you guys just go see comic book movies and have no fucking idea in your head how shit works? Like, it's literally, it's literally a recasting just done smart. That's the, that's the problem I think people have. Is they, they can't comprehend when something is done smart. It's like, they're literally giving you what you want, but you can't comprehend that the fact that they're playing chess and they're four moves ahead of you. That's the problem. You want them to recast? They literally did. Shuri is not going to be Black Panther after this movie. She literally gives it up at the end of the movie. She literally becomes Black Panther in that moment to save her people and fight against Namor and all that stuff. And at the end, she gives it up. She's no longer the, the queen or king of Wakanda. What do you, like, like, do you guys go to the movie and pay attention? Or do you guys only see what you want to see? And, and the fact, I, I seen someone throw this out there, that by not recasting T'Challa means that um, one is disrespectful to Chadwick Boseman and young black kids today have no one to look up to. No young black boys have something to look up to. Like, bro, he was in Civil War. He was in... Both Avengers, Endgame, and Infinity War, and in his own standalone Black Panther movie. We have four movies to look up to him. Dude, I went from Superman 4 to nothing, to nothing, for like 10, 15 years, 20 years, no Superman, right? Never once I go, damn, fucking white boys ain't got nothing to look up to, 
right? And not only that, I kind of find that disrespectful. So you're sitting there thinking like, okay, well, young black boys have nothing to look up to because they didn't have T'Challa in the movie. Well, he was in previous four movies that they can still freaking watch. And not only that, what about when the new T'Challa becomes of age in like four or five years? You're telling me there's not going to be young black boys that need someone to look up to then? There's always going to be someone to look up to. There are new kids being born every single day that need help. The generation right now still has Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther, but now we got a new Black Panther for the future generation. Not only that, what about young black girls? Don't they have someone they need to look up to as well? So by you saying that, you're saying that you're just counting the fact that Shiri doesn't play a part and that young black girls don't matter. That's what you're saying. And, and these are these are complaints that I'm hearing, guys. These are the complaints that I'm hearing. That young black boys have no one to look up to. Like you you got you got Chadwick Boseman in four movies. And by saying that you're discounting that black girls matter doesn't matter. Black young black girls' lives don't matter. They don't need to look up to nothing. So 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 Shuri is not important. Shiri is not important. And then, of course, you got the sexist is out there that, oh, this movie's all female, it's all female, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. Never once was it all woman power. They, they, they worked with the pieces that they had. These were characters that were established in the first film. You, you think they were just going to disappear in the second film? Like, what are you talking about? It's what they had to work with. It's what they had to work with. Bringing back Killmonger would make no fucking sense. I don't know why people keep bringing that up. Fucking, he was a fucking dickhead in the first movie. He was a fucking asshole. They doubled down that on that on the What If series where he had a chance to be good and he was still uh, basically just pulling the wool over everybody's eyes and he was a fucking asshole. Then in this movie, all you hear is in, uh, Angela Bassett go, you guys are the ones to put Killmonger in charge. You guys are the ones. Like, they doubled down that this guy is a bad guy. There's no good in him. Bringing kill like, like If you guys honestly think that bringing Killmonger in to replace T'Challa is a good move, then you honestly do not understand the layers and the, the different themes and thematic themes and story plots within the Black Panther franchise. And I don't think you should really be calling yourself a Black Panther fan because there are, there are layers. There are different levels. There's complex storytelling going on. Everything is done is done for a reason. If you guys really think that Killmonger would have been a good choice, then you, one, you did not pay attention to the story that Ryan Coogler was being told, and you're doing a disservice to the Black Panther franchise and Ryan Coogler as a storyteller. And I don't understand why you people are just losing your goddamn mind. I really don't understand. If you honestly feel so strong in your beliefs and, and really feel like they should have done this, they should have done this, I can't believe they did this, then fine. Like I said, this has turned into politics and religion for some reason. You're never going to get someone on the other side to, to, to agree with you. The other side is never going to see your point of view. We can agree to disagree and just move on at that point. Allow the people who enjoyed the movie to enjoy the movie. It's the same thing when Last Jedi came out. It's like everybody went out of their way. I mean, how many years have we passed and there are people still bitching about that movie? Let the people who enjoy it enjoy it and then move on. Like don't like don't stand on this mountain going, they should have recast T'Challa. Because chances are, <coughs> if they did, you'll be standing on that mountain going, they should have never replaced T'Challa. That's that that's the problem. That is the problem. Because people say they want something, and then when they get it, they don't really want it. By recasting T'Challa, you have so many different things. That, that could go wrong. Well, people would compare him to Chadwick Boseman. People would do this. Like, like, how long has this been since Mark Ruffalo replaced Edward Norton? And we're still saying Edward Norton was the better Hulk. That was the, that was the second movie in the MCU ever. Ever. Second movie. And we're still saying Edward Norton was the better Hulk, right? Imagine if you replace someone as iconic as Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa. Man, you would divide the fan base. So they took that, that piece off the table and played with what they had. And they recast them in a smart, intelligent way. And if you can't see that, then I'm sorry. Maybe your IQ is stuck in the basement and just can't get past the first floor. I, I don't understand it. I really don't. 
and I'm not trying to criticize anyone and call them stupid, but the, the complaints that you're complaining about is literally fixed right there, and you're still complaining. And I still don't get the whole thing like young black boys need someone to look up to. That To me, I think that's just an asinine comment. The fact that people are complaining that it's all female empowerment, I think that's an asinine comment. I think a lot of the stuff in this movie that people are complaining about is just completely asinine. And another one before I leave, the fact that... Um, Marvel Studios is exploiting black people for money. That one bothers me because, I mean, you didn't say that about the first movie. So, of course, it would get a sequel. How's it exploiting black people for money? So that don't make no sense. Um, that mean, I mean, what you don't you don't want Marvel to make a, a movie about black people? Like what? I don't I don't get it. That that's a stupid comment. Um, another comment is. Uh, Marvel explained Chadwick Boseman's death for money because, you know, they, they play the real world sickness in there and they do the funeral. That is called paying homage and respect to the actor. Did they exploit Carrie Fisher and Rise of Skywalker when they had her die in the movie? Like, like when they had her in there and then she died and they killed her off in the movie? Like, like was that exploited? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. Um, This is a very touchy subject, so I'm just coming at you raw, live, uncut. Uh, They, they call this... What do they call this in the wrestling terms? In wrestling terms, um, there's a term for it. I can't think of it. Um, oh, man, I don't fucking know. I haven't watched wrestling for it ever. But, um, you know, when, when basically you want me to shoot. That, that, that it is. I, you want to shoot? Here's a shoot. I'm shooting. I'm, I'm, this is a shoot. Like, like boom. I'm, I'm telling you what's up. Like, this is the facts. So anyway, love me, hate me, I don't care. This is my thoughts on it, and and yeah. So it took a movie that I actually really, really loved and was excited to talk about and have content, do rankings and everything, and it turned into something where I'm trying to avoid it like a plague. I didn't even upload anything yesterday because I'm like, man, I just got to stay away from this shit because people are fucking cray-cray right now. And I think the world right now is enough cray-cray, and we need a little more happiness and a little more joy in the world. And I don't think that we should be sitting there and trying to Take it from people that actually enjoy it. If you want to be miserable, go be miserable. Leave other people alone. That's that's my my take on it, man. But anyway, my thoughts on it. Uh, leave those comments in the comment box below, guys. Smash that like and subscribe button. And until next time, Wakanda forever.